Good day, good day, good day. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes, it's 12 p.m. Good day, everyone. Good day, good day. I greet everyone. I say welcome to today's lesson. It is a Wednesday. And how are you all doing? I hope everyone is doing OK. I hope everyone is doing OK. Today is Wednesday, and it kind of feels like the weekend during a weekday. So, woo, you know, so thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have had a wonderful morning so far and that the rest of your day is going to be good. And this is how you are beginning the rest of your day. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. This is time for English Home Language for Grade 9. And today we will be doing punctuation. Yes. It, this will be our third lesson on punctuation. So we will be continuing to do the other punctuation marks, which we didn't do in the first and the second lessons that which we did on punctuation, okay? So it's going to be good, it's going to be great, it's going to be nice, we are going to learn and you're going to appreciate punctuation marks even more. So without a waste of time, let us quickly see who is absent. Let us see who is absent. Let us see who is not. Let's see who's part of our lesson today. Please type a hi in the chat so we can see who is with us today. Quickly type a hi in the chat. You can quickly type hi in the chat. You know that is our register. It is our way of seeing who is with us today. And it is also our way to see who is not with us today. Yes, let us take the register quickly so that we can start. There really is, okay, there is a lot to cover today. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. I see a couple of highs in the chat thank you i think you i'm so good to see that all of you i hope that all of you are ready and you are ready to learn you are ready to learn you are ready to ask questions you are ready to answer questions yes so thank you so much for joining us i welcome everyone i welcome everyone all right so since you said today it will be about punctuation, here are the content of our lesson. So we will be focusing on brackets, colon, semicolon, as well as quotation marks. So these are the punctuation marks that which we would be learning about and going through today. So without a waste of time, let us get on with it. So remember in the previous class, we covered clauses, the non-clause, the adjectival clause, as well as the adverbial clause. And it was a wonderful lesson. I remember the way you were interacting and answering all those questions from the activity that we did. OK, in today's lesson, remember we are doing brackets, colon, semicolon, as well as quotation marks. OK. So the introduction, who would like to read the introduction for us? Simply raise your hand. Okay, we have Tandi who would like to read the introduction for us. Hello, Tandi. Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm good, thanks, and you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Please read for us our introduction. introduction imagine how difficult it will be eh? imagine how difficult it will have been to make sense of and understand written words without punctuation 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was going to be difficult, isn't it? You know, so and I, I know that even in this lesson, you realize that without the punctuation marks that we will be learning about today, you realize that very many things, a couple of things were, are really going to be difficult for you to read and understand. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Tandi, for reading that for us. So here is uh, our uh, quote for us about punctuation. And I see a hand, Unka can read this for us. Good Hi, day, Unka. sir. How are you today? I'm great, and you, sir? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yes, can you read this quote for us? Yes, sir, it goes by. To some people, the fact that I'm not married or don't have any children would be the reason I have written a book on punctuation. Mm -hmm. line trust. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Onga. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I really love to give you. I really love giving you opportunities to read because I know you love reading, and you are so good at it. Thank you so much. You. We all remember from our second lesson. I did say this that punctuation marks are like road signs. And you realize that if you ignore punctuation marks, you ignore them at your own peril. And if, when you ignore punctuation marks, they lead to misunderstandings, okay? It is very easy to misunderstand anything that which is not punctuated. So I think we all know that. And that is something that, that which we will be reminded of during the course of the lesson today. Oh, before we start, and another thing is that although we are learning about punctuation marks here, how we use them in writing, since you are in grade nine, you are not really far from going to university. You are not really far from going to a college. So if it happens that some of you decide to go to a TVET college and you do maybe computer studies, you may really meet programming and you will realize that even with programming, if you if you do not understand how the punctuation marks work you will struggle okay they may tell you to write a program or a software to do something and simply because you wrote a comma we have to write the full stop or you wrote the full stop you should write the bracket those things they will really work against you and when they work against you you will really be stuck you know you'll be spending hours and hours trying to figure out what you did wrong and when you figure it out you will realize that the only wrong thing that we should did was that you put the wrong punctuation mark. I mean, can you imagine how frustrating that is? Spending hours trying to find what you did wrong. And then when you finally find what you did wrong, you realize that the only wrong thing you did was to put a wrong punctuation mark. It's very frustrating, I tell you. It is very frustrating. And it is something that which I wish that you never have to go through. That is why we are learning all these things so that we can avoid going through such things because that's, that's some of the uncomfortable experiences of life that which we, we can avoid and we can learn from other people. All right. So our first punctuation mark is brackets. Can someone tell me what is the other name used for brackets? What is the other name used for brackets? Can someone tell us what is the other name used for brackets? If you do not want to call it brackets, what do we call it? You can raise your hand or you can write it in the chat. What is the answer? Yes, Onga, you are right. The other name we use for brackets is parentheses. Okay, if you do, if you do not want to say brackets and you want to sound much more smart, you know, you want to sound smart and you know, <laughs> so then you can call it brackets. So you can call it parentheses, right? So yes, brackets are also called parentheses. Thank you, Onka. That is correct. All right. 
So a punctuation mark that is used for enclosing additional information is a bracket, okay? So brackets is a punctuation mark that is used for enclosing additional information, okay? Okay, so, so for that, here's the first example. It was the statement that was given by the DBE and inside brackets, I wrote depart. Oh, sorry, let me correct that. It should be Department of Basic Education. Department of Basic Education. So can anyone, someone tell us why I had to write Department of Education inside the brackets? Why did I have to write the Department of Education in brackets? Why did I have to write the Department of Basic Education in brackets? You can raise your hand to answer this one. Why did I have to write Department of Basic Education in brackets? Someone, anyone to tell us why? I, okay, let me read that statement again. Maybe it will give you perspective. It was the statement that was given by the DBE. Okay, then inside the brackets, I wrote Department of Basic Education. All right, we have Onga in the chat saying, uh, it is because it shows the meaning of DBE which makes you to understand the abbreviation. Thank you so much, Onka. That is perfect. And that is, yes, yes, you are right, Onka, because remember, chances are DBE can mean something else to another person, okay? So by opening brackets and writing the Department of Education, I am giving you additional information about what this DBE is. Therefore, I am also giving you the context that, oh, this statement, it comes from the Department of Basic Education. Okay, it doesn't come from another thing that which DBE can mean. Okay, we have a hand from Tandi. Let's hear what Tandi has to say. Yeah. Hi Tandi, how are you? Yes, Tandi. Tandi, yeah. how can I help you? Yes, speak. You put brackets around words or numbers to separate them from what comes before and after. I, I didn't hear that. Can you please say it again? You put brackets around words or numbers to separate them from what comes before and after. Okay, so you say you use brackets after words, after what? You put brackets you put brackets around words or numbers to separate them from what comes before and after. Oh, so you put brackets around words to separate them from what comes before and after. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand you, but I... Okay, can you give us an example? Um, let me see. Okay, let me continue. We'll come back to example after my last example okay yes sir. yes thank you tandy so let's wait for tandy to give us example so that we can all understand what she's saying i do understand what she said but i mean i just want to make sure if i understand it the way that this, she means it okay yes so i've already said that brackets they are used for enclosing additional information you know yes so you can really think of yes you know you can really think of Brackets as you know, um, I don't know, a tip, something extra to really help you. Then second example, he is going to USA 
Then in brackets, I put United States of America, okay? Chances are, we don't know. It could be that to some people, there is another, there is another meaning for the acronym USA, all right? So therefore, you have to write in, in brackets to show that the USA we are referring to here is the United States of America. Because I remember also with us growing up, there is this place called Atheridgeville in, in Pretoria. So people who are from there, they will say we are, we are from USA. And we, and we will be surprised, and, oh, USA, really? You're from USA? And they will tell us that, no, we are from the United States of Atheridgeville, and we will all laugh about it. Okay, so yes, so yeah. So, so you realize here that by putting this brackets here, it gives us additional information about USA. Then it also establishes a context for us. Okay, we know, we know, we know the context of what you are talking about here. Another example, the use an LTE, in, and then I open in, inside brackets, I wrote for G router, okay? Why? To show you that um, this LTE, is 4G. Remember, I know, okay, most of us, we have 4G smartphones because 5G is a recent, it, it is a recent technology in South Africa. So yeah. So anyway, for everyone with a 4G smartphone or tablet, the thing is for some phones, it writes it as LTE. For other phones, it writes it as 4G. Okay, yeah, so that is the same thing. That is the same thing. So in this case, I had to write 4G in brackets to, to to show you that the LTE I'm talking about here is 4G because chances are someone can read LTE and maybe think that it is light, you know, and no, it is not light. It is not light, 4G is not light. It is a, it, 4G, it is, it is a network, okay? Yeah, 4G is a network, LTE is also a network. Then another example we have, my favorite singer released her album last year. So you realize that with this one, with this one, I had to write the year 2019 in brackets, okay? Why? Because this will, this will really give you clarity about when was this last year. Chances are after two years from now, it will be the year 2022, okay? Therefore, if I say my favorite singer released her album last year, 2019, then you realize that, oh, this statement was actually written in 2020. That is what the person said last year and they put 2019 in brackets. Okay, let's go back to Tandi. Remember Tandi gave us an example, which, we, okay, Tandi gave, gave us a use for brackets and I asked for examples of that and she gave them in the chat. Okay, so she said, for example, she wrote Oscar in brackets, she wrote my cat was looking hungry. So from here, we can see that Oscar, okay, because for me, if you didn't write my cat inside the brackets, I would think that Oscar is a, I would think that Oscar is a person. Okay, perhaps your brother, your friend, your whoever, but I would think that Oscar is a person, okay? But from here, from this example that Tandy gave, she wrote Oscar and in bracket, she wrote my cat, okay? So Oscar in bracket, my cat, was looking hungry. So from here, we can see that, oh, Os this Oscar is not a person, but Oscar is the name of Tandy's cat. Okay, oh, thank you so much, Tandy. That is a very good example and so easy to understand. Then we go to the second one. Tandy said Dal, and then she opened bracket, wrote 1916 to 1990 close bracket, wrote many books, okay? So from here, we can see that, oh, what is written in the bracket, it gives us additional information about DAL, okay? So since this additional information is numbers, then we learn that, oh, okay, so then this DAL wrote many books and DAL lived between, he lived, okay, his life was lived between the years of 1916 to 1990. So from what is written in, this, in the brackets, we learned that Dal was born in 1916 and he died in the year 1990. Wow, Tandy, thank you so much. Those are wonderful examples. And I hope these examples will really help everyone. Thank you so much, Tandy, thank you so much. That is how we can get to use, that is how we, 
that is how we get to use brackets. Those are other ways of using brackets, okay? And you, you also learn a, another way that, okay, when you grow up, when you're going to do assignments in varsity, in college, when you are supposed to reference, when you're supposed to reference, you will be using brackets inside the text where you will be referencing, okay? Thank you so much, Tandy. That is a wonderful example. Thank you for, for sharing it with us. Thank you for being confident enough to raise your hand and share it with us because we really need it, okay? So from what Tandy did today, there is one thing that which all of us can learn. We can learn that whatever idea you have right now, whatever question you have about the lesson content, you really, you really need to share it with us because not only will it benefit you, but it will also benefit all of us. Okay, it will benefit all of us. Everyone will benefit. Remember, we are all here to learn. Okay, so let us use this opportunity to learn. Thank you so much again, Tandy. Thank you so much. I can never thank you enough for that. Okay, let's move on. So, okay, um, still on brackets. What is another? Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. So still on brackets. Okay, so brackets is, an, is a punctuation mark that is used in dialogues to show advice to characters or readers how to speak. Okay, so can we have a boy and a girl to read the dialogue for us? Please raise your hands. A boy and a girl, if it happens that we, if it happens that we have two hands of girls, one girl will read with her own voice and the other girl will just deepen her voice so as to sound like a guy. Or if you have two guys, one will read with their own voice and the other guy will read like a girl. Oh, there are two hands, Tando and Onka. Okay, Tando will be Candice and Onka will be Dr. May. So Onka, please uh, deepen your voice so that you can sound like a man, okay? All right, but, but, but anyway, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Dr. May can also be a woman, so it's okay, it's okay. All right, let Tando go first. Okay, hey, wait. hi, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm good. Okay, Tando, you can be Dr. May. It's okay, it's fine. Okay. Um, pardon me, Mrs. Maboya. It was just a suggestion. I meant no offense. I understand that, and as your doctor, I will do what is best for you. Okay, thank you, Tando. Now let's it's on just turn to read. Exactly. I'll be here as early as eight on Tuesday morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Unka. Thank you so much. So you you realize that what is written in the brackets, they didn't read it. Why? Because what is in brackets, it shows us, it tells us how the characters in the dialogue speak. Okay. It tells us about their mannerisms. Remember previously in our lesson on dialogue, remember, remember what I said? I said that with communication, there are two things involved, okay? When you communicate with a person face-to-face, -face, there are two things which are involved. Number one is verbal communication. Number two is non-verbal communication. So verbal communication has to do with the words that which you say, okay? The words that which you say are verbal communication. And in, and in a dialogue, verbal communication are the words that which you say, and it is these words here which are written. Then for non-verbal communication, which is your mannerisms, the tone of your voice, what you do, your body language, you know, all those things, they are non-verbal communication. And in a dialogue, we show them when we write them inside the bracket. Okay, so that is the use of a bracket, that in a dialogue, we use the bracket to advise characters or readers to show them how a character speaks or what are the mannerisms of a character when they say something? All right. Thank you so much, Onka and Tando, for reading that for us. So we are done with brackets. Remember, if you have comments or, que or a question, you can write in the chat or you can simply raise your hand and you know I will give you a chance to speak. The next punctuation mark is the colon. Yes, it's colon. I know you're in grade nine. Perhaps some of you they are thinking about that part in the stum that part in the digestive system, that which is called a colon, right? <laughs> yes. But anyway, here remember it is not natural science, and it is not life science either. 
but it is English. So the colon that which we are talking about here, it is the colon, which is a punctuation mark. And can we, can I see you write the colon in the chat? Can I see you write a colon in the chat? Let's see you write a colon in the chat. Remember, a colon is two dots, okay? Or two full stops, one at the top and the other one below it. So that is a colon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. I see, I see a bunch of colons in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. So a colon is a punctuation mark that is used to introduce a list of items, okay? Is there anyone who, who would like to read for us the first example? Wow, Tando, that is that was so quick. It was almost you, like you knew that I was going to ask <laughs> someone to read for us. Yes. Um, in high school, I did the following subjects. Mathematics, physical science, life science, geography, speedy home language, English FAL, and life orientation. Thank you, thank you, Tando, thank you. So yes, those are the subjects that I did in school personally, okay? so. This example is a personal one. All right, so from this example, what I want to demonstrate to you is how to use a colon. So you'll see in high school, I did the following subjects colon, okay? So the colon there, it serves to show, so the colon there, it, it is there to show us that, all right, all right, okay? It shows us that there is a list of things coming, okay? So then a colon, even, even you, when you read, when you see a colon, then you, you just take a deep breath, okay? You know that there is a list of things which is coming, all right? And that is what I did in this example. I did the following subjects, and then what do I do? I write a colon, and then I list those subjects that which I did in high school. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then example number two, anyone to read for us? Anyone, anyone? Okay, Tando again. Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Yes, Tando. We are looking for the following people. Lerato, Candice, Michael, and Lesedi. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. Thank you for reading for us, Tando. That was good. You are reading so good, so well. Yes, so we are looking for the following people. Then there's the colon, okay? So the colon, it shows you who, sorry, so the colon, it, tells us, it communicates to us that what is coming, it is a list, okay? Therefore, we need to pay attention for that list. All right, for the third example, I see Onka's hand is up, so Onka will read the third example for us. You go buy flour, vanilla essence, is and egg. Yes, so you see from here, we, we just give you a list of the things that which we are going to need to bake a cake or yes to bake okay let's just say to bake whether it's a cake muffins scones or whatever that which we are going to bake so you realize that here the way that which we have used the colon we have used the colon to list things okay so there is another use of a colon and if you are paying enough attention i think you 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 might you, you might have seen it in our lesson when we were still talking about brackets so what is the so what is the other use for for a colon? What is the other use of a colon? Okay, Onka's hand is still up. So it's also for direct speech. A colon for direct speech? Yes, sir. Okay, let me give you a clue. When we were discussing the brackets, where did you see the colon? Remember, Onka, when we were still on the section of brackets earlier today, where did you see the colon? Okay, I see, I see, all right, let us, let, let me show you the answer to my question. All right, so a colon is a punctuation mark that is used to separate the names of characters with the words that they speak, okay? So 
Yes, in in a dialogue, we use a colon to separate the we, we use a colon to separate the names of the characters with the words they speak. Okay, here's an example that this Dr. May, that is the name of the character. Then we write the colon and then there, there, there are the words. Okay, so then you realize that we have the name of the character on the left and then we have, okay, we have the name of the character on the left side of the colon and we have the name and we have the words that the character speaks on the right side of the colon okay so you will see that the colon becomes like our middle ground so you will see that the colon here is used to separate the names of the characters from the words that they speak do you all see that yes so that is another use of a colon that we use it in dialogues all right okay so who's in the mood to read this for us you know, just to flex our reading muscles. Okay, we have Tando. Let's see another hand to join her. Tando and Unga again. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. So Tando raised her hand first. She'll go first, and then Unga will go after. Um, am I Dr. May? Yes. Okay. I think next week, Tuesday. I'll be in a better position to give you a clear indication of what we have found in all the tests we have been conducting. I am still going to consult with other specialists and by next week, Tuesday, I will give you a comprehensive report in this regard. I hope that you will come with your husband so that I can explain it better to you both. No, doctor. My husband is not around. He is traveling and he will be back after two weeks. So you won't be able to make it next week. Thank you, thank you, thank you for reading for us, Tando and Onga. As always, you read good, you read so excellently. It is so great, it's so wonderful to hear you read, to see how excellent you are in your reading. Okay, so now we are done with the colon. Next, we go to the semicolon, all right? So we go to semicolon. Okay, we have Unga send this still up. Let's hear what she has to say, if she has a question or what. Okay, all right, she doesn't have, all right. Um, now we are going to a semicolon. I know perhaps one of you is thinking, since semi means half, then semicolon is a half colon. <laughs> Well, not quite, not quite, not quite. But a semicolon, it looks like a colon. The difference is that there is a full stop at the top and below it is a comma. So let us see you write a semicolon in the chat. Okay, let's see you write semicolons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see a lot of semicolons there. Thank you so much, thank you so much. You know, a little bit of exercise for your thumbs, for your fingers, a little exercise for your fingers, and it is also a way to consolidate your learning, okay? Yes. So with whatever that which you learn here, just find an outlet to practice it and you realize how meaningful it is, right? So this is going to be an interesting section of our lesson. So a semicolon is a punctuation mark that is used to link and to join two related sentences without a conjunction. Okay, before we move on, can someone tell us what a conjunction is? Is there anyone who can tell us what a conjunction is? All right, we have Onka in the chat saying, um, a conjunction is a joining word which joins two sentences. Yes, Onka, that is correct. A conjunction is a linking word or it is a joining word which joins two sentences. That is correct.
All right, so the first example, she won the spelling B. She studied so hard. So, okay, when we look at the first example, you'll see she won the spelling B. There's a semicolon, she studied so hard. So you realize that there, instead of a semicolon, we could have put a conjunction. But in this case, I didn't put a conjunction so that I can show you how a semicolon works. Mm -hmm. All right, so I know some of you, uh, when we talk about spelling bees, you think of that movie, Akila and the Bee. Yeah, you know, you know how it goes, you know how it goes. Yeah, it's a very interesting movie. Anyway, let's continue. A semicolon can be replaced by a full stop thus forming two sentences, okay? So, I, so I'm so going to take the same sentence. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we are going to take the very same example. She won the spelling B, then you're going to write the full stop. She studied so hard. So what does that mean? So this means that instead of using a semicolon, we decide to use a full stop, okay? So we use a full stop to replace the semicolon. So when that happens, we do not, we, we no longer have, we no longer have um, one sentence, but we have two. Okay, remember, remember what a full stop does. A full stop shows us the end of a sentence. So she won the spelling B, that's the end of a sentence number one. She studied so hard, that's sentence number two. So from here we have two sentences because of the full stop, all right? But if we were using the semicolon instead of the full stop, then it's just one sentence, but it is linked or it is joined together by using a semicolon without using a conjunction. Okay, and another way we can say a semicolon can be replaced by a, by a conjunction. Uh, we have conjunctions such as for, so, because, and, and but. Okay, so from those conjunctions, you can look at the one which can really be relevant to our, to our sentence, okay? Not all of them will be relevant, and let me show you that, okay? Uh, remember the the conjunction for it is used. Okay, the, the conjunction for it is used when you want to give a reason, a reason why something is happening. Okay, you can say, "I made tea for you." So when I say "I made tea for you," it means that the tea that which I have made it was because of you. It means that you are the reason I made the tea. Okay, yes, and so so okay so it's almost like therefore, right? And because it gives us the reason why you made something, it almost functions the same as for. And it's a conjunction which joins two sentences which are related to each other. So and is usually when we are talking about a list of items and before we list the last item, we use and. Remember, if you're talking about five items, you are going to say item one comma, two comma, three comma, four and, and five. And then the word but, it is used to contrast, okay? If the sentences are related, but then one is contradicting the other or it is in contrast, in contrast with the other, then we use but. Okay, so yes, and so from here we see that, okay, for our example here where we use the semicolon, the best conjunction for us to use would be because, okay? So it will read like this. She won the spelling B because she studied so hard. Okay, she won the spelling B because she studied so hard. So even when you think about that spelling B, that movie, Akila and the B, where that girl won the spelling B, we, we remember that she won that because she was studying so hard. Okay, she was really literally studying everywhere. She really made cards and she was studying everywhere she went. She was just studying. She was really so obsessed with winning this that she will study at every opportunity that she gets. Okay. So a semicolon, again, what it does is um, it is a punctuation mark that we use to separate items in a detail list, okay? So here's an example there. At the kitchen, I made coffee, boiled eggs, then there's the semicolon. At the bedroom, I lied down, made the bed, and played music, okay? So, 
So you realize that, that okay, these items, although they are separate, but then they are detailed. Some, sometimes when you list things, you cannot use a comma. A comma is not enough because there are some things that which you really need to explain in the context of their own selves. Okay, and that is how a semicolon comes. You can really think of a semicolon to be like the coaches of a train, okay? Think of, think of a semicolon as the coaches of a train. Okay, in this coach, there's one thing. Okay, it's fine. In the second coach, there, uh, there are three things which will separate with commas. In the other coach, there are five things like that, like that. So if you could think of a semicolon as coaches in a train, then you will be able to separate the items in a detailed list in a way that which it will not confuse you as you write, or it will also not confuse anyone who will be reading what you write. If you have any question on that, remember, you can raise your hand or you can write in the chat and I'll help you. Okay, the last quote, sorry, the last punctuation mark of our lesson will be the quotation mark. Okay, and what is the other word for quotation marks? If you do not want to say quotation mark, what can you say? Yes, Onka, you are correct. Another word for quotation mark for quotation marks is inverted commas. Let us see you write quotation marks. Let us exercise our fingers and see you write quotation marks. Let us let me see you write quotation marks in the chat. All right, okay. Yes, I see a lot of quotation marks in the chat. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Okay, so a quotation mark is a punctuation mark that is used to, number one, to indicate direct speech. Okay, here's an example there. Asanda said, I love playing music. So you realize that I love playing music is a direct speech. I love playing music, these are the words that Asanda said. Okay, these are the words that Asanda said, I didn't say them for herself. I may love playing music, but I didn't say them for myself, for her, for her. Even if it happened that Asanda has a spokesperson, these are not the words of her spokesperson. These are the words which come directly from the horse's mouth. Yes. These are the words which come from the mouth of Asanda herself or Asanda himself. Number two, quotation marks are used. Okay, quotation marks are used in words which are said by someone else, okay? In such words, we call them a quotation, all right? Then here, I've decided to use the quote that which I used at the beginning of the lesson. I quote, to some people, the fact that I am not married or don't by Lane Trust. So all these are, this, so this is a quotation. And we use quotation marks to capture a person's quotation, okay? To really show that these are not my words, okay? These are not my words. These are not my words, but these are the words that which were said by someone else, and I'm also saying them. Okay, so yes. So yes, this is the end of our lesson. So is there any question before I close? Remember that punctuation marks are very, very, very important in a way that which I cannot stress it enough. Okay, so any question? Any question on punctuation marks? Remember what we did today? Today we did the brackets, the colon, the semicolon, as well as quotation marks. Is there any question or do you need clarity on any of those punctuation marks? Okay, so, 
All right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see there are no questions. And